thank you for coming. I'll just try to answer your questions at the end. But before we start, I'd just uh, like to alert you. You may already know, sad news, Deputy First Class Austin Derek Aldrin was shot and killed yesterday in Spartanburg County. Sheriff's deputy. I spoke with Sheriff Chuck Wright. He was a fine young man, and I ask everyone to keep him and his wife and family in your hearts and prayers. Sometimes it's difficult to understand why some of these, some of our people get into this dangerous business, but they do so to protect us, and we have to be thankful for them and appreciate them. Of the subject today is the budget. <clears throat> As you know, it is a big one. I think it's around about $14 billion, which is more, much more than usual, and I'll get into that a little bit in just a minute, but I guess the, the main thing to say is that we do have a great team. It has been a pleasure for me and my staff to work with the members of the House and Senate as well as civic leaders and others around the state, but particularly working with the members of, of the House and the Senate, notably Speaker Merle Smith and Chairman of Senate Finance, Harvey Peeler, and of course before them it was Speaker Lucas was there as well as others. But we make a good team, and we've made a, a lot of progress working together. Actually, uh, this year, 259 of my executive budget proposals have been adopted in the General Assembly, and they're good ones. There are a lot of good ideas, a lot of great thought went into the things that we're doing uh, in these laws and these provisos. And as a result, right now, our economy is booming. Our state government is in the strongest fiscal condition ever. <clears throat> Excuse me, we have the largest budget surplus that we've ever had. We have the largest rainy day reserve account balance that we've ever had and the lowest debt in the history of our, of our state government. We have over $4.4 billion in surplus revenue this year. That's $4.4 billion. That's in tax money coming in, state money coming in that we expected. That is good news, and that reflects the booming economy and the progress that we're making. If you included the $2.4 in federal ARPA funds and the $525 million in the SRS funds that are available to be appropriated, the General Assembly, along with that over two, two uh, 4.4 in surplus, we've got $7.3 billion new dollars to appropriate in some, some way. Uh, that is grand news for the state of South Carolina, and some of it should be and will be returned to the taxpayers in the form of rebate. Again, I want to thank Speaker Merle Smith and Chairman Harvey Peeler and the members of the General Assembly for working so closely with each other and with my office in getting this progress done. Income tax. The largest income tax cut in our state's history is now law. This marks the fourth year of my executive budget proposal where I've asked to take our top rate of 7% down to 6% uh, in the, in the in personal income tax brackets. Uh, as been noted, South Carolina had the highest personal income tax in the southeast and the 12th highest in the nation. Our neighbors, North Carolina, Georgia, and others, are reducing taxes. Other states, or some states, do not have any income tax. So we must continue to what we can do, do whatever we can do to remove the tax and regulation burden off of our people. So our income tax cut, the largest in history, is now reality. And partnering with the $1 billion income tax rebate, this will help keep South Carolina competitive for new jobs and investment for years to come but we must do more. We must continue to take that burden off of our people. Investment into the classroom. Last year, we made a transformative investment into early childhood education. We expanded full day kindergarten for every at-risk four-year-old child in the state. This expansion will allow parents to choose the public or private provider that meets their child's educational needs. Teacher salaries, we must raise our teacher salaries to attract and retain our talented teachers. Our goal is to have the best teachers in the country here in South Carolina. 
the state budget raises the minimum starting salary for new public school teachers to $40,000 a year, which as you remember is up from $30,000 just five years ago. So that's great progress. Public education funding reform. As you know, we consolidated several se separate funding streams that were confusing, very difficult to understand by anyone. These streams flowed into the state and to the local school districts and then into the classroom. But we have now made it clear that every st state dollar follows the child and every parent will know how their school district spends every single dollar and how their child's school performs compared to others. Roads, bridges, and interstates. Our state's booming economy and rapid population growth have outpaced our state's ability to keep up with improvements to our transportation infrastructure. There is no infrastructure more in need of big, bold, and transformative one-time investments than our state's roads, bridges, highways, and interstates. So this year, almost $1 billion in state and federal American Rescue Plan Act funds have been appropriated to the Department of Transportation to accelerate construction, expansion, or improvements to our state-owned roads, bridges, highways, and interstates. <clears throat> Excuse me. What will this do? It will accelerate the widening of Interstate 26 to six lanes between Columbia and Charleston, Interstate 95 to six lanes in the low country, and additional lane widening on Interstate 85 in the upstate. Rural water and sewer. Also, using federal ARPA funds, we made almost a billion dollars available to the State Rural Infrastructure Authority for new water and sewer systems in our state's poorest counties for water and wastewater systems that are currently operating out of compliance with state regulations and available for incentivizing large municipal water and sewer systems co to connect with smaller ones and the faltering systems as well. That will mean a lot, especially to our rural communities. Broadband. Access to broadband is a necessity, especially for those in our rural areas. <clears throat> what depends on broadband? Well, all things, it seems. Emergency response, health care access, education, all rely more and more on interstate access, and it needs to be fast. This year, we've provided an additional $400 million in federal ARPA funds to continue the expansion of broadband into all parts of our state through public and private partnerships. Freeze on college tuitions. Well, this is the fourth year in a row that we've done this. We know that education is the key to the future. And this year, we froze college tuition for the fourth year in a row for in-state students while providing additional funding for needs-based financial aid uh, and any, in any in-state public or private college university or at our technical colleges. And this state budget again provides one-time funds to address repairs needed at the aging state-owned buildings and infrastructures on the campuses of those college universities and technical colleges. Workforce scholarships. These are critical to our state's future and we know that they'll work, they work. Our booming economy right now has created a thousand open jobs. We have jobs looking for people. Usually in the past, it's been people looking for jobs. Well, we have the jobs now. But we, what we have to do is be sure that our people are trained and qualified and educated to take them. And these are high demand, skilled trades and professions. Working with the South Carolina Technical College System, we created what is known as the Workforce Scholarships for the Future at our 16 technical colleges so residents can get degrees or credentials they need to fill one of those jobs I mentioned in these high demand careers, including manufacturing, healthcare, computer science, information technology, transportation, logistics, construction, and a lot of others. So far, over 6,000 students have taken care, have taken advantage of that and we're taking care to see that we spread that and have more money to provide more in the future. Fund the police. To keep South Carolinians safe, we know that we must have a robust law enforcement presence. We believe we have the finest law enforcement establishment in the country. 
we have great police and we want to fund the police, not to defund the police. Our law enforcement, however, continues to lose valuable and experienced personnel because the departments are unable to keep up with the, com with the competitive pay and benefits offered by other places. In January, I directed the department administration to undertake a complete compensation analysis of all law enforcement positions at all state agencies and to provide recommendations for what we ought to do about compensation packages. As a result of that study, this budget fully funds those recommendations providing about $40 million in new dollars for recruitment and retention pay raises, salary adjustments, and additional benefits. By having strong law enforcement, we keep the people safe. We know that we must keep our law enforcement safe too while they're on the job. And the General Assembly appropriated $20 million to fund body camera and protective vest program at the Department of Public Safety for local and county law enforcement agencies. Those are critical to keep our people safe and our law officers safe. No income tax on retired military personnel. That's, a, that's one that we've been working on for years. And as of now, the career military veterans who retire in South Carolina will no longer pay state income taxes on their retirement pay. We know that the decision makers at the Department of Defense will certainly take that uh, in, into note and into consideration when they determine the fate of our state's military installations, of which we have eight. And if you include the Coast Guard in Charleston, that would be almost a ninth installation. No state has a stronger military tradition than ours. And that's uh, one reason we have a lot of military personnel retiring to South Carolina. Public confidence. This state budget includes my recommendations to expand the resources of the Office of the Inspector General while providing the State Election Commission funds for new auditors to conduct regular and routine audits of elections held by our state and the political subdivisions. Rainy day reserves. This is one that we need to work on. As you may know, I've twice proposed in previous budgets that the General Assembly set aside $500 million in non-recurring revenue in our state's general reserve fund, which we commonly call the rainy day fund or the rainy day account. The goal is to maintain a balance equal to 10% of the general run, the general fund revenue from the prior fiscal year. We need to be careful that we have money for essential services if there is an economic downturn, and everybody's been listening to the news in recent, uh, recent months. However, rather this time, rather than depositing the 500 million that I suggested into the rainy day account, which would increase that balance to almost a billion dollars, the General Assembly did something different. They chose to leave $447,840,393 unallocated in the fiscal year 22-23 general appropriation budget. That's unallocated, but it's not in that rainy day account. And under the rules, if unspent in this fiscal year, these funds will be considered unrestricted surplus funds next year and will be available to the General Assembly for appropriation in next year's budget. Although I appreciate the General Assembly's restraint in not seeking to spend that additional money, I think putting it in an unallocated place instead of putting it in the rainy day fund is analogous to stashing the cash under the mattress rather than put it into a, save, a savings account at the bank, and I would prefer that they had done it the other way. <clears throat> H 3346 is a positive step, but it's clear to me the General Assembly needs to do some more work. I asked the General Assembly as soon as practicable to send to my desk legislature appropriating this unallocated $447 million into the General Reserve Fund. By doing so, we will safeguard those surplus funds and enhance our state's rainy day account, which you never know when you will need it. Earmarked appropriations. Finally, and this is where my vetoes come in. Finally, I applaud the General Assembly for passing the most transparent and accountable budget in modern times. After decades of overriding the vetoes of governor after governor, 
the, uh, the legislature and leadership of the House and Senate took the unprecedented step of requiring public disclosure of the sponsors and the recipients of earmarked appropriations. All of these were previously shielded from public view, debate, and scrutiny. However, just disclosing the sponsors and the recipients is not enough. Without the details of what the projects are, how the recipient intends to spend the money, taxpayers cannot evaluate the earmark's merit. Also, no matter how deserving the project, the public has no ability to have confidence that the money is being appropriately spent. So on May the 16th this year, I requested members of the General Assembly to provide my office with information, the necessary information, on their earmarked appropriations. Most of the members responded with the information requested. Some did not, and that led into some of these vetoes. However, I think there's a better way to do all this to accomplish the transparency and accountability for the taxpayers. I once again ask the General Assembly to consider my straightforward proposal to create a public merit-based competitive grants process for these types of appropriations. It would be administered by state funds. Funds would be made, made available only to entities which demonstrate the required community support and mission consistent with the policy goals and outcomes intended by the General Assembly. Further, all applications and award criteria would be placed online, allowing for public scrutiny and total transparency. I believe that is the best way to accomplish those goals. So, in closing, I'll say over the past five years, including the last year, our successful partnership with the General Assembly has produced a resounding win after a resounding win for the people and prosperity of South Carolina. This fiscal year's budget includes a record number as 259 of my executive budget proposals, which is up from 93 of last year. So you can see there's a lot of cooperation and working together. To my colleagues in the General Assembly, I say thank you. I say the people of South Carolina have benefited from our ongoing cooperation, communication, and collaboration, but there's still very much work to do and the best is yet to come. Our future is very bright. With that, I'd be glad to answer any questions. You said most of those uh, earmarks, that legislators responded to most of those well, what they put in there. Do you have a percentage or a number for how many actually explained what they were spending? I don't. He does, maybe. If they did, does it mean they automatically did not? Did they automatically uh, just about. We did, we also did as much research as we could when the information was inadequate. That we tried to find out as much as we could from uh, authoritative sources to fill in the gaps. But in some cases, we just have no idea what the money's going for. And you know, in the past uh, and the present, there, a lot of times, all this money goes to an agency somewhere. And then the, the money goes from that agency to the project. You, you remember in the past there have been conversations about agencies getting money and they didn't know what it was, they didn't ask for it and didn't know what it was supposed to be for until someone from someone's office called and said, write a check for this amount and send it to this place. That's not the right way to do business. So I, I think the way to do it would be with a competitive or, or an open competitive grants process for those sorts of special projects. Sure, it was. Any yeah, there, there are a number of them. Well, I'll start with <clears throat> the whole bunch of them, probably about 30 uh, that were, uh, money was put on the line, just uh, $1 in anticipation of filling in the blank later where the blank was filled in someplace else, but these are still part of the budget. So of course I vetoed all those, those are about there are a number of those. Uh, there were some where there were duplications where money was asked for in two different places for the same thing. Of course, they vetoed those. Some of them uh, uh, we vetoed because they did not seem to be the, the, a good expenditure of state money. It ought to be local expenditures. 
uh, and not, not state expenditures. But we have a list of all those for you. With the what? Are you referring? I don't know which one. Yes, well, we, we have money for rural infrastructure. I'm not sure I understand the question. Oh yes, Go, we got we got a, a lot of good information, and again, some was a little uh, a little skimpy, but we were able to do some uh, inquiry on and follow up, and some inquiry on our own, and we got more information. But there's some we just don't know what the what the money's going to. You have a the name of a project, we don't know what it is. You can't tell what it is, and no information was provided, so those got a veto, of course. It depends on the project, but the real question is we ought to have all the information. It ought to be public. It ought to be the, the citizens ought to know what it's going for. And that's why we, we have elected representatives here to represent the will of the, of the people. And the best, uh, the best way to do things, if when you're spending somebody else's money, is, is let them know exactly what it's going to be spent for, why, how much, and when, and then follow up with accountability to be sure that it was done. And, and that, that is the uh, effort that we're undertaking with our request, and, and it's, uh, it seems to be working. I think we're moving in the right direction. Well, yes, I think we ought to put uh, more money into the, the scholarships, these workforce scholarships. I think in the future we need to have more money uh, for law enforcement. We need to have more money for teachers. We need to have money for I-73. Uh, there are a lot, of, a lot of things that would be transformative and good for the state. If, if we can keep the people safe, and we can provide ample opportunity for good education and training, then, uh, and keep taxes low. And of course, we're going down. One of the big things we did this time was about with the, that tax uh, decrease of going from 7% to 6% over a number of years. That's about a 14 and a half, 14 and a quarter percent decrease in income tax right there. And with that tax rebate, uh, that's a, that's a significant move uh, for the taxpayers of our state. We need to keep doing that. My response would be to the, the president. They ought to undo what he did in, when he came into office by shutting off the oil coming into the country and uh, shut, shutting down uh, uh, our ability to, to get more oil. I mean, that, that's where these, these problems originated. But the, the, gas, the gas tax, and, and of course, I, I, didn't, I did not support raising that tax, but now it is built into our future. And the, the money that we raise in our gas tax uh, go, is, is spent uh, wisely. Uh, it is necessary. We've got to get, we've got to widen these roads. We, people must be safe uh, on the roads. And also, these contracts are made for in the future. So the, the contracts and our, our obligations to make our roads better and safer for more and more uh, growth and prosperity have already been laid. We do not want to, to interrupt those plans. That would, that would not be good. I do not know exactly what that is. But I, I, I do know that the universities are, are not in, involved in it. Um, uh, I, 
don't know that that is a, it's a it would be a nonprofit. Uh, I don't just have questions about whether that is the role of, of state taxpayer money to go to that project, which does not seem to have attracted the attention of those who do those kind of things already. And it, there are a lot of unknowns there. Thank you very much.